go, here we go again Trying hard but you wanna be my friend Ain't no place to hide, ain't no one to run to Here we go, here we go again Call my bluff, I'ma be here till the end I'm the one you ride, I'm the one you ride to If you Welcome back one and all, we're here for the second round of the Asia Cup in Bahrain. The Zakir International Circuit, and of course, we're back in the Haas, currently second in the championship, just behind the Mercedes, a man like Donkey. But looking here, of course, it's a dry quality session and a dry race. Of course, one of the two sort of dusk night races, three if you include Abu Dhabi. We're going out on the medium tyres, looking to set... Our best lap on the mediums, of course, the strategy is going medium to hard. One stop better than two, in my opinion. You don't want to get caught up in traffic. We're currently in P13, just having set a bank lap on the soft. See, we're miles, well, four tenths away from that as things stand. And now as we run towards the line now, we're also going to jump up on our delta. And we go into P5, or 128.5. Boss currently in P1 on the mediums in a 28.1. And now, I decided to go out for a late run on the soft tyres. And the lap was good enough for pole. I didn't record it. Classic me. First time I get pole in a league race, don't record it. But it was pole in the first league race for me. Tenth and a bit ahead of Lurch. But it's pole position for the Bahrain Grand Prix at the Asia Cup. And we're getting well. We're going to come now to the end of the formation lap. Ready to get racing here. Starting on the soft. So hopefully we should have a good launch. And as we wait for the rest of the grid to form, the lights are here now. We have four. We have five red lights. And it's lights out. And away we go for the Bahrain Grand Prix. You see the cars moving out at the back. We've got a very good start as things stand out, of course, on the outside into turn one. So we're going to have to try and avoid any carnage. On the inside, the Renault has gone shooting off the middle. The Red Bull comes diving in as well, just avoids the Ferrari in the background. And we're going to just about hold on to P1 as things, taking a bit more of a cautious line around the outside and lurch onto the back of us, but not quite being close enough to make a move into turn number four and as we move on we see boss now in the medium tires has gone up into p2 but we've got our head down in the soft stink got our head down and worked hard using the ers and fuel loads to our advantage really but look at the tire where 63 percent and 62 on the left hand side so very very marginal just getting it down in time for the pit lane but had to extend the stint as long as we can because it's hard for the end now definitely not too stopping because you don't want to get caught up in the traffic further back in the field we're going to come out now. Of course, Lurch uh, pitted on the previous lap, and we're just going to come out ahead of him and King David. Both of them pitting as King David just got past Lurch into turn one, and we're just ahead of the pair of them now. So as we move on to the start of lap 11, we jump up to P9 as guys pitting. And now on the hard tyres, we have to do our best to stay ahead of the faster cars behind. Of course, they're on the softs and mediums. We're going hard to the end. You see the braking mark has just been smashed there by somebody in front. But this medium stint, we have to try and make them last as long as we could. So again, dropping it down, dropping down the ERS in the corners. Now, see, we're um, catching up to Boss now. So he's made his pit stop. So very crucial. This is effectively for the race leading. We just nip ahead into turn one. So just keeping it with the undercut. But he almost made the overcut work on us. We managed to slot him. Move on to the start of lap 13 now. The Mercedes driver is right behind us now in the slipstream. Surely with DRS as well. We could look to cover the inside. We can try to dive around the outside. We're late on the brakes and tuck into the corner, but he's got a much better line through there. Get the switch back now as we come into turn two. The slight kink of three, and he's right on the back of us. Dived straight to the inside, very defensive. Straight away, as we know, this is effectively for the lead now. He's going to try and go round her outside. Swooping round her outside now is the Mercedes driver, and we're still side by side now. We're in the more harder place to go into the next corner, and we just back out of it. Think about it sensibly, and know we've got to do. 16 more laps on these hard tyres. We can't be racing hammer and tongs. He runs a little bit wide into the hairpin. And we're, again, right on the back of him, but better traction. I think he's a bit more confident and a bit more able, you know, able to use the tyres a bit more than we as we run a little bit wide into that very difficult braking zone of turn 10. We've got DRS as well to play with for the next couple of laps. And that helped us stay ahead of the Ferrari and the Williams, to be fair. So another sort of tactical thing 
that was probably beneficial uh, to Boss getting past. But effective P2 at the moment as the Williams comes into the pit lane. We get promoted up a few more positions. But with hard to the end, we had to do our best just to keep it on the road. Using the DRS of Boss in front as he was effectively paving the way for us as Lurch and King David right behind us throughout this whole start of the stint now. See King David caught onto the back of us as uh, Boss managed to pull a little gap now at the start of lap 19. And looking to the inside, we actually turned it out to no ERS deployment and lean mix because I realised that on the medium tyres, he could not go to the end. He pitted before us, could not go to the end on the mediums. It was going to be, you know, touch and go on the hard. So no point risking it and getting involved with a massive fight. And now I can use the DRS to help push me further into this race and take it a bit easier in the corners. See, we managed to stay right on the back of the Williams, flying through the fast part at the end of the second sector now. And utilising DRS as much as we could in getting that speed and managing to keep the gap behind 2P4, which was our teammate, Jazzy Jeff. Just around nine seconds at this point. And still, we managed to keep within good distance. The DRS massively powerful around this track, so something to, that was super helpful for us Three DRS zones, of course, now. And you see, we're coming to the final corner now. And King David will actually be peeling off into the pit lane just about now. He made a late dive for the pit lane. And he'll go mediums to softs now. And to the end on softs, he'll go. But of course, he'll go straight in the traffic and he's going to lose massive amounts of time now. And he's going to come on to lap 27. But he managed to keep ahead of Jazzy Jeff. Keep the gap as high as he could. But there's the left flag up ahead. And the Mercedes of Boss has gone off. So this could potentially be our chance. As he darts back onto the track just in time. I don't think he had any damage to that Merc. Coming to the final lap, so you see he's pushed the gap a little bit. And the gap behind to Jazzy Jeff still sort of uh, just under eight seconds. But the meet, the hard tyres to the end, definitely the right strategy for this race. Managed to keep them just about in working order. As we come towards the line now, Boss wins the Bahrain Grand Prix. But we managed to get a P2 from Paul Sek, the fastest personal best on the final lap and I have to be happy that two P2s in a row now P2 in Australia and a P2 in Bahrain and that will actually put us top of the championship in the C3 Asia Cup 11 points clear of the two Mercedes and our teammate who are all on 25 points joint second place but get ready for China next week which should be another great race